Retro Python bringing us this Dreamcast only image, 512 gigabytes, so it's quite large, but with data getting a little cheaper now, it's actually not too bad. Over six, like I said, 600 Dreamcast titles um, with this custom Dreamcast theme rocking for the Raspberry Pi 4, it will not work for the 3, but uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 plays Dreamcast very well. And as you see here, even everything from going into your settings over here is done through a Dreamcast Live menu. And when you load a game, for example, you'll click it and it will actually spin the disc for you just like this. Pretty cool, right? So if you can get a little snazzy dream case, Dreamcast case for your Raspberry Pi 4, you load this image on it, I think you're going to be pretty happy. Now, there are a couple caveats and I'll get into that in just a moment. But if you're looking for a Dreamcast only setup, look no further. So I'll go ahead and go through these games. It starts at, what, 18 Wheeler, you can go all the way back to the, and then lastly, Vassar is the last game. But starting from the numbers into, into letter A, we have, you know, 18 Wheeler. I'm just gonna scroll through these games. You get a nice CD case cover. Um, if you hold that, if you just wait here, as you see here, it doesn't turn into a video or anything like that, so there are no video snaps. As I mentioned in the earlier in the video, it's about 600 games total. And as you see here, you have not only Japanese releases, but also North American and other releases included. Most of these games are running the Flycast emulator. It does seem like Redream is installed, but I noticed a lot of these games will not even boot with Redream in their current settings. You might have to change a couple things. The other thing when you boot this image up is it probably won't work for your controller. I have an Xbox 360 controller and I have a Logitech F710, both of which do not work on first boot. So what I had to do was plug in my keyboard. I hit enter on my keyboard. It brings you to this menu here. Scroll down to U, uh, UI settings, or I'm sorry, go to uh, configure input. Click A on your keyboard. Click A on your keyboard to say yes here. I've already done it since booting, so I'm not gonna do that again. But do know that it's something you have to do. Um, depending on, I don't know, whatever controller he was using when he built the image should work out of the box, but it's not an Xbox 360 controller and it's not my Logitech that I'm using right now. So as you see here, it is really beautiful. And earlier in the video, you saw it spin up and you saw the different, you know, how it starts the games. It's super rad for those things. Now, something I haven't really dove into too much is how it's not filling my entire screen right now. I believe I saw the over buffer at uh, 1280 by 720. And I forget what you have to do, but I think there's some display settings you have to play with in the config file um, in order for this to fill your whole screen. I'm assuming he might be running this on a different style monitor than I am. I'm running this on a 27 inch 1080p monitor. And that's why it's not stretching to its fullest, uh, you know, to the edges of my screen here. Uh, but that's totally fine, especially with these Dreamcast games. I'm actually not too upset about that because, you know, these games were played on that type of screen back then. So um, it's not necessarily a deal breaker for me, but do note that you might want to play with that. So two little fixes right off the bat with the controls and the visuals. Now, um, I've played a few games now. Um, a lot of these games I've never played before. So it's kind of cool to me to have all these um, but I just didn't, I did want to say that there's actually a few games that just don't load for me. Uh, I guess I got to try some more cores and get them working, but um, they just get stuck on the um, on the boot screen and they just don't go anywhere. Um, I'll have to do a little bit more experimenting, but for the most part, most mainstream games, you know, like that Toy Story 2 game we just saw, um, uh, Tony Hawk, Ducati World, all these games work just fine. I haven't really found too much of an issue there. Um, the other uh, thing that you should know about this image is that um, it is 512 gigabytes, which is huge. A lot of people are probably going to ask me if they can put it on an SSD. I'm sure you can. It's just, you know, you have to go through all the, you got to make sure it's on the latest firmware and then, you know, get it to uh, burn your image that way. It's just not, it's nowhere near as drag and drop as it would be as if you just put it on a micro SD card. Now with the micro SD card, it's going to cost you somewhere between 70 and hundred dollars maybe more if you're in a different country. So I can understand that the expense here, but you know, I know a lot of you out there have like different SD cards for different systems. Now, this is one of the larger Dreamcast collections I've ever seen. So for those, you know, it's, it's really cool that he A, made the theme and made this full image. So that's why I'm even doing this video because I do think it is 
niche, and um, I do think that Dreamcast plays really well on the Raspberry Pi 4. With, when it comes to Nintendo 64, it's highly debated. A lot of people don't like playing Nintendo 64 on the Pi. I get it. There is some lag there. There's a lot more tearing going on. But with Dreamcast, for the most part, you know, I grew up with the Dreamcast. I had a binder full of burned CDs. And, uh, you know, to me, the performance between this and the, or, and the real thing, um, you know, using an actual disc is very comparable. Um, and I'm sure I'll get some hate on that saying that. But for the most part, it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, 90% there versus Nintendo 64, which I would say maybe 80% there, 85%, depending on the game. So, um, there was one other little, you know, because it's my job to just kind of really look at some stuff, and I've been reading the comments from everyone else, um, and that is that this particular image is 512 gigabytes, so, it, you know, and it's RAR, it's, it's zipped up, it's compressed, so the download itself is under 400 gigabytes, it's like 389 or something like that, so that wasn't too bad. But then, now you have a 400 gigabyte file, either on your external hard drive or your internal hard drive, somewhere on your computer somewhere. And then now you have to extract it. And depending on how you have your extraction program set up, it needs, it needs not only the 512 gigabytes, but maybe a little bit more space for the temporary file as well. Um, long story short, you need to have a multi, you have to have at least like a one terabyte or larger hard drive to just extract this. Somebody might know a, a workaround, but you know, just for me, the simplicity, what I did was I just extracted it onto an external hard drive. The external hard drive was like a five terabyte hard drive. So I just extracted it through the hard drive, using the hard drive. And then I, I burned it to a 512 gigabyte Samsung Select is the, is the SD card you're on right now. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is A, so you know, you don't spend all that time. A, it will take you a long time to download that. And then two, um, you know, a lot of people said that he should have pie shrank this image. And uh, I believe if he did, he would have a lot more, you know, you wouldn't need to, you wouldn't need a whole 512. Maybe you can get it into 450 or something like that. So that was um, just one more thing um, to, to keep in mind as far as the size. MDK2, great game. I mean, as I'm scrolling through here, you know, these are some really very thorough collection here. So as you saw earlier, you just click the A button to launch the game. So if I click my bumper buttons, it brings you to the option menu. That's if you hit your bumpers, just so you know. But you can also, if you notice there on the bottom, there's like some shortcuts. The menu button is also, I guess it's select. I forget what that little button is next to cycle option. But um, you can even, or up, I think is that up? Because if you go up, you can, oh no. I think it's just the bumpers. Okay, yeah, just the bumpers. I thought you could hit something else. Okay, you can add to favorites using Y. And then if you go back. Okay, yeah, so I just hit back. I hit my, um, my, uh, it's either A or B. I guess it's the A button. And uh, now you go to this screen here and you can switch between play and settings. Which is just another shortcut for basically what I was just doing with the bumper button. But so there's two ways to do that, long story short. So love the Dreamcast loading screen, you know, love the theme. And there was just, there really was a lot of really great games for the Dreamcast. And repeating what I said earlier, it is a really cool system that the Raspberry Pi plays really well. Now some of the games I haven't played before, but based on the cover art, I don't know if these are mature <laughs> games or not. I'll have to, uh, dive a little deeper into that there's background music as you can tell as well and that's something that you you know my, you didn't need to disable the script manually through command line because if you hit the option menu i don't see an option to turn it off or you have to um just delete it off the uh you know network into your pi and delete the music files manually uh or go into the raspberry pi manager in options and delete them that way there may be some other ways as well, but those are the, the first ones that come to my mind if you just want to get rid of them. This is a lot of games, so. <laughs> I mean, pretty cool that you can have this all on this one micro SD card. 
Now, you know, another, you know, bonus, another bonus is that, you know, all these games are now in your hand. So this game I couldn't get to load. Like Tetris Online Edition was one of my plays I couldn't get to load. Just wouldn't load. I did get Tokyo Extreme Racer to play, played it. We're gonna play some games. Tony Hawk played just fine. Toy Racer played just fine. Depending on what uh, emulator you're using, you might have to go to options to set up your Dreamcast controls. I'll show you how to do that in a second after we're done with the games. You might have wet tricks. You got like three Tetris games on here. You got your Worms, you got your WWF, and a few more to end it. Zero Gunner 2, great game. Zombie Revenge, pretty cool. So as far as what version, this is running 4.7.3, Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm just gonna load up some gameplay, play some games. This is uh, Tokyo Racer. There's a Tokyo Racer 2 as well. A uh, lot of fun. I remember playing this as a kid. Uh, you could find probably Tenacious D in the arcade, but this was like the next best thing. And uh, fun game. Uh, I definitely couldn't figure out which was my break key here, so my turns were a little wild. But um, still, <laughs> I still won. As you can see, I'm beating my rival up there in the upper right hand corner. And uh, yeah, this game runs just fine. Uh, this one is running on the uh, Flycast emulator. Most of the games I played in this video were on the Flycast. So all the games had this. I was able to enter, put this one in, and you can actually hear the click of the power button. I don't know if you heard that over my voice. There's a little game of Tetris that I totally screwed up on, but uh, I eventually got my Tetris. Rest in peace. The uh, Tetris champion who died a few months ago. Jonas. So um, I guess I'll give you my final thoughts on this image. And uh, would you prefer if I just didn't say anything during gameplay? But uh, final thoughts are, you know, uh, Virtual Man has the Dreamcast add-on pack, which gives you a ton of Dreamcast games. And to be honest, for me, it has most of the games I would play. So, and I have all of his add-ons and his hard drive all set up. So, you know, I can either play it through his, you know, Raspberry Pi 4 image, or I can play it through his um, his retro bat image for the PC emulation. So, uh, here's Chicken Run. So, you know, for me personally, I'm probably not going to keep this image. You know, it's just going to review it and probably, you know, I'll go back to, if I'm with my 512 card, I'll probably, I just have one 512 card, so I'll probably keep, just re-burn my, my Virtual Man image. But if I had a bunch of cards, you know, I'd definitely keep this one. And if I wanted to explore those Japanese games and things, I'd definitely do that. You know, um, I think to each their own. I'm just simply, you know, stating my purposes. Um, overall, I'll give this image like a B plus. There was definitely some issues with it, as I mentioned, with you know not resetting the controls. Um, some games aren't booting up. Um, you could have updated the ret retro pie to the latest core. Um, you know, put some documentation as far as um, video outputs, things like that. I know I'm being nitpicky, but you know I've seen a lot, so. Um, you know, I know for some people, they just plug it and play it in, plug it and play. So having it all set up to boot is is a big deal. Um, but whatever the case, I agree with everyone else's comments. So cool when new people come out in the scene and they drop their images and they share them. So A plus for, for, for the love and the sharing. But that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one.